Hey everybody, welcome back to Bonsai Tortoise. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna take you through a couple months worth of work on this tree uh, and uh, show you uh, results and the final product, which is right here. I got this one from Adam Levine down in um, Orlando, Florida, and he got it from uh, Jim Smith. So if anyone down there um, in YouTube land doesn't know who Jim Smith is or was, um, he was an icon in tropical bonsai. Um, he basically put the dwarf jade on the map, the Portugal Cabra Afra, um, very well known in a lot of circles uh, and did amazing work with some trees. So it's it's um, it's definitely worth a Google search if anybody wants to check him out. He's no longer with us, unfortunately, um, but it's it's nice for me to know that I actually have a tree from Jim Smith's nursery. So whenever I start working on a tree, I like to assess it. Um, you know, this tree I know pretty well. I've had it for a long for a while, but I like to assess it to see what it needs. Obviously, it needs to be pruned and cut back, um, and uh, obviously de-weeded and all that stuff. But for obvious reasons, I like to make sure nothing else is going on. So, you know, I take a look at it, see what I'm dealing with. Um, there's some wire here that's probably cut in. So the wire definitely has to come off. There's some really, really long branches here that, that need to be pruned back. So um, there's some cool new aerial rootage coming down here. Uh, one of the things I noticed here, there's some roots that are coming out of the pot, which typically means that you want to repot the tree. Um, I don't really want to do that today though, because uh, I really like the aerial roots and if you kind of let them go pop down a little bit, um, they will uh, kind of come back with a propensity of aerial roots a lot of times. So um, this one already has a few good ones over here that are coming down. So I think the major work is going to be kind of cutting back this foliage, seeing what, we got, seeing what we're dealing with, um, maybe putting some new wire on um, and uh, kind of just taking it from there. I'm not sure if I'll do a total defoliation or not, but um, we will see. So I think first things first, um, let's uh, get rid of these weeds. So when you're removing the weeds, make sure you get every single part of the weed itself. So you can see all these big long roots on this, this weed here. You know, these roots are probably just as long, if not longer than the plant itself. So if you just pick the green part off and kind of just pull that, pull that off and leave a lot of the roots back, this will just bud back from the roots and get thicker and kind of more intrusive. So you want to get as much of those roots out as possible. And no weed is too small. Get rid of them all. The tweezers really help kind of get the rest of that plant out. You can see I'm gingerly kind of yanking this out, trying, trying to get all the roots out. It helps you get a better grip without just leaving the green part. You can see, look at all these roots. So all that is taking nutrients away from your tree. This is a really time consuming process, but it's worth it for the health of the tree. I mean, weeds aren't gonna really kill the tree for the most part, but they will take up all those nutrients and the, the fertilizers that you put in there, they'll take that away from the tree. So um, you don't want anything competing with your tree. So we got some really cool rooters going on. So we have another aerial root kind of bouncing off here, coming down here. If we can get that to thicken up, that would only help enhance the nabari. Um, you have other aerial roots coming through here. This tree down up through here, it's packed with soil so you can't see it. It's actually kind of hollow. Um, so I'm hoping that roots kind of grew down through that and fills in that hollow spot. You have other aerial roots coming down the side here and this kind of comes around to the back and goes back down here. That's a crossing root uh, right here. A lot of people don't like that, but I think that's character. So I'm gonna leave it there. And then another aerial root coming down from this aerial root coming all the way down here. Um, I love aerial roots. I try to maintain them as much as possible, but it's a taste thing. You know, a lot of people don't like the crossing roots. They don't like uh, how aerial roots will a lot of times uh, thicken a branch like this one. So this aerial root is basically feeding this branch, which kind of messes with the uh, the taper of the whole entire tree. So this branch here 
is a lot thicker than the branches on, on this side over here. Uh, because of this, this aerial root here and this one and this one are helping to feed this branch. So literally I could probably cut this branch off right here from this tree, which I'm definitely not gonna do. And this could be a whole other tree easily because it's already got the roots going on. And then looking through it, I got some branches that are kind of going straight down. Definitely got to take them off. But all in all, it's looking like a healthy tree. Um, I don't think I'm going to repot it today, but what I might do is I might shape back some of this top layer of soil, uh, put down new fertilizer, and then put new uh, for, uh, soil back on top of it. But we'll see. So looking at the branches, we have some really long branches here, you know, that obviously need to be cut back. Some more here. Some are longer than others. We've got a really long one back here. Um, so I think I'm just going to kind of cut back these branches to two leaves for now, see what the tree looks like, uh, and then decide from there how much I want them to foliate. When I have wire on the tree, um, a lot of times I like to take that wire off first. That way, if I, um, mess with a branch or break a branch, taking the wire off or, um, you know, rub buds off or anything like that, uh, I don't, I haven't already defoliated it and which would leave me with less options. So this way, taking the wire off first kind of leaves you with more options later. And I find that Ficus Bertavii's branches are kind of softer in a lot of ways than um, uh, like a Ficus Mycocarpa. So I tend to try to cut the wire off instead of taking it off um, because they don't, they're not as forgiving. To a certain extent i mean they're more forgiving than a lot of other trees but they crack easier uh just my experience with them and my experience with like spurt dvi if you're an aerial root person um where i live at least they have um a propensity to give off more aerial roots than other ficus trees uh you know like maybe then um like the willow leaf ficus or uh uh you know ficus mycarpa and stuff and um, so if you're in the aerial roots and you live in the Northeast and you have the right conditions, I'd say in my experience, Ficus Bert DVI is a better tree for that. Now, if you live in Florida, you know, aerial roots are a dime a dozen. You know, it's a lot easier to grow aerial roots down there than it is up here uh, on those other trees. As I understand, there's two varieties of Ficus Bert DVI. A uh, large leaf and a small leaf. I was told that this was the small leaf when I bought it, uh, but I have other Ficus Bert DVI that I've done minimal work to that, you know, I haven't done any leaf reductions on them yet. And uh, their leaves are actually smaller than this one. So maybe this is a small leaf and just grows differently, but these leaves were larger when I first got this. So, but they do. You know, they do get relatively small. And if you look at that, that's not bad. But the new growth, I'll show you on this one. That's that's obviously too big of a leaf. So it just takes some some you know work to get those leaves small. So where I live in New Jersey, and the way I keep my trees, um, I can do total defoliations in obviously the summer when everything's outside but I can also do them in the spring and the fall because I keep them in a greenhouse, which offers me more tropical conditions uh, in when the weather is not ice cold, chilly like the winter. So I don't, I don't gen generally I don't do a total defoliation in the winter time. Um, I do it when the trees are actively growing. And for me, that is, uh, between, I'd say, March and um, probably October, maybe November. If you're living in the Northeast and you're keeping your ficus inside in the winter, you know, on a, you know, windowsill or um, maybe uh, in a basement with, with artificial lighting, um, you might not want to do your big time defoliations unless you can really provide that really good lighting that it, that it needs or, uh, and, and the humidity that it needs. Remember, these are tropical trees, so they need the humidity and the, um, 
and the lighting kind of to make sure that they're kind of growing the way they should. So at this point we got, you know, all those leaves off and you cut back on all the branches as far as I can tell, um, except for that one. And uh, what I want to do is kind of assess it to see if I want to do a total defoliation or if I want to remove branches. Uh, one of the issues with this tree, I'll show you. So you can see it's got this awesome base, but this this branch here, this one right here, this and you can see this whole side is relatively thicker, right? Uh, I wouldn't say it's well developed yet, but it's it's thicker than this. So it's all balanced on this side. You know, I've considered getting rid of all these branches and just having a tree that kind of comes up from this really cool Navari and kind of comes off to the side, but I'm still not there yet. So we need to bring this side along um, and make it more in balance with, with this side. Uh, the reason that this is more well developed is because um, this thick aerial root, these, these aerial roots here, are feeding us. So this whole side is getting much more nutrients than this. Uh, if we had aerial roots over here, kind of shooting down, um, this might be more well balanced, but we don't have that. So we are working with what we have to work with. So right now I'm kind of going through it, seeing what I missed, debating in my head whether I want to do a total defoliation, which I probably should do. Because this side is um, more well developed than that side, we're going to kind of try to push this side back a little bit in favor of this. I've left some buds on the end of each branch over here to kind of make sure that the nutrients is flowing straight back and forth, straight back and forth, um, which will help thicken this branch up a little bit and get it to where it needs to be. These trees do bud back really, really easily when you cut them back to branch stubs. So I think we're going to do a partial defoliation. I think we're going to leave some of these leaves over here and do a a harsher cutback over here just to kind of bring things in more in balance. I don't know, we'll see what we see. You know, you really want to take the time to kind of study your tree, think about how you want to make it um, go, and have that, at least what I do is I have that debate in my head to see where I want it to go because, you know, once you make the decision to cut back branches that you've worked on for years, um, it takes time to, to bring them back if you do something you've got to read. Red. Take the time to kind of learn your tree, see where it's going, and appreciate for what it is. Have an understanding that the decisions you make now are going to impact later. So it's also times like this where I kind of regret doing that cutback that quickly because I should have left some more branches longer over here. But it's okay, we'll get there. Okay, so I think I'm going to do it. A full defoliation on this side and a harsher cut back on some of those branches even if it's going to mean getting rid of some ramification and then we'll see if we do the same thing on this side and when I'm cutting back branches I usually start at the tips and work my way in and eventually those those branches kind of get smaller and smaller I might end up doing one cut back actually cutting the tree back a branch back three or four times in one sitting, um, just to kind of get it to the to where I want it to be. You know, there's one thing about bonsai, you can't have immediate gratification. Um, you gotta really, you know, take your time, think about how the tree's gonna react, have that debate in your head, and um, and take it from there. So now I've, I've totally defoliated the side that's more well-defined than this side, right? All these other branches that you, all the leaves that you see here um, are all considered growing on this side of the, the tree. So I have two options, right? I can maybe defoliate this side a little bit more um, and leave this kind of as it is. I'm probably gonna chop this back a little bit further, but, or I can chop this back really far, right? Um, and make that, and then also defoliate this side at the same time, so thereby making the skeleton of the tree mostly in proportion, which I think that's what I'm going to attempt to do. So I'm going to do a total defoliation of the whole thing, and then start chopping branches back to see if I can get balance in the skeleton, basically in the, in the structure of the tree. Let's see what happens. So what I'm doing now is I'm defoliating the whole thing, 
to kind of see what my structure looks like. And then after I get the whole thing defoliated, see what branches I need to cut back further to make sure that both sides are in balance with one another and hope that I can actually get there. Okay, so you can see, um, now that I have everything defoliated, you can see the structure a lot better. And this side is definitely more robust than, than this side. So um, I wanna make sure that this side kind of matches that side to a certain extent um, in, um, in robustness, whatever the right word is. Uh, I guess balance is the right word. So I'm gonna look at this side, see how far I wanna push this thing back. Um, now that I have done a total defoliation, um, a lot of the new aerial roots that are coming out might dry up because it's not going to be shaded anymore. Um, but that's the, the risk you have to run um, to, to get to where you need to be. Uh, there's a lot of, I can see a lot, a lot of new little tiny buds of an aerial root coming out in different places now that the leaves are off. They're probably not going to make it, um, but you know, we'll get more aerial roots at some point later on. I think the structure of the tree at this point is more important than than getting more aerial roots because um, the the bari itself is really amazing to begin with and i don't really need any more aerial roots but you know i like aerial roots so i want more we'll get them later though so as i'm trying to figure out what i want to do next you know i'm keeping in mind these branches right here are technically on, on this side of the tree that's more well ramified right uh, but i pulled them over here in the past to kind of assist with, with coming over here. So if you look at it from the front, I'm missing a big chunk of branches that I need here. That's what I'm trying to get with these branches here. Unfortunately, these branches often get shaded out by everything else. So they don't grow as well. Uh, so there's no more pulling them over that's gonna help me get to where I need to be. I need a, another branch that kind of comes out here somewhere and kind of fills in this space. I also need, you know, to mess with either this branch, which I could totally remove, or this branch here. And what I might do is kind of get this and turn this a little bit and bring this branch back here somewhere to help. But there's something that, that needs to happen, and I need another branch here that kind of fills in this space. That's really what I'm missing. Um, I could graft another whole tree on there which I'm actually considering doing. So one easy way to get more branches over here is I could actually graft a branch or, um, or actually a whole other tree, which could actually turn into an aerial root here to come out here, which I might, might, I might do in the future if I don't get to where I need to be now. But what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna actually do is hope that this branch buds back somewhere around here um, where I'll have branching coming off somewhere in this section here that I'll be able to fill in this hole and make this look as full as this and if that doesn't work come early fall I think what I might do is try grafting something here uh, because at that point it'll probably be due for another final defoliation maybe even a repot um, and I might um, try to graft something here it's kind of cheating in a way, but it's also part of the technique. It's not, it's not really cheating actually. It's just a technique. Okay, so now I'm gonna just look at the tree more, see what else I should cut back. So to kind of show you what I'm thinking of doing, this branch here kind of comes over here, right? And it, I don't need it here at all. Um, I have this, this branch does plenty of the work for me that, you know, so this is, there's no need to have this here and it kind of throws it off. Uh, so I've considered cutting it off, um, but I'm going to try to use it to kind of get some more stuff over there. So if I take this branch, kind of put it here, this is going to be hard for you to see on this camera, but, you know, get this branch and move this kind of there. Take this branch and push that back and obviously wire it so it doesn't look all funky. It might get me to where I want to be, but it, but the, the problem is this branch here, the problem is this branch here now kind of has this funky loop thing, crosses this branch, and that might look weird. I'm gonna try it and see what happens. 
Um, I can always cut this branch off at a later date. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. Yep, I don't like that at all. So this branch is coming off. This branch here worked out well, and I can get this branch to kind of fill in some spots kind of back here a little bit. This looks stupid. So I'm probably gonna leave the nub of this branch here just for now because the wire's on it and it's securing this branch here a little bit better. Um, and then I'll just cut that back again later. But this is doing me no good. It looks looks stupid and out of balance and not happening. So that's coming off. So that's that, but now I'm left with an empty space here because I used this branch to kind of come back here. So I'm gonna to try to get this top part of the branch to kind of come back that way and fill in that space, which I think I can do. So I'm gonna to try to hold this down with a guy wire if I can get through this root and if I can use this root as an anchor. Okay, so I got this kind of like a guy wire here, pulling this branch back down this way. Um, but I'm not gonna push it anymore because I cracked this branch. You know, like I said earlier, these branches are a little bit more brittle than other ficus. I cracked it right there. I think that'll be okay. I'll put some cut paste on that later. Uh, I think it'll be okay, but I don't, obviously I don't wanna push this branch any further than I have to right now, but it's kind of in the position that I want it. And once that, that cut heals, that, that crack heals, um, I'll be able to kind of move that a little bit more later on down the line. So I'm just going through, seeing what continues to be out of balance, like this branch here. I am going to cut back some of this branch because even though I said I didn't want to, I think this might, if I cut this back more, it'll help bud back here. I do have some branching here back further but I want more branching on the back side here. So I think if I cut this back, pretty hard actually, reverse psychology, I might get it thicker back there. I'm gonna put a little bit more wire on this branch here to, to kind of bring that over a little bit more and fill in that space. So I'm still looking at this branch. It's got not, it doesn't really have much taper. And by the time it buds back here, it's too far away from the main branch. So I'm considering chop right there, which I'm going to do. And I think I should chop over here as well. And up here, and up here. Okay, I, I think we're done. This is not really what I envisioned I would be doing to this tree when I first started working on it. But I think this is gonna be better for the overall structure of the tree in time. We need something right here to come back, right? We need this branch to bud back in the back to fill in the gap that, that's missing over here and to start ramifying this side more like this one is ramified. Now I've taken away a bunch of the ramification on this side because I'm trying to balance the tree out on both sides. This branch here, I'm not sure if that'll come up in the camera. There is a branch right here that I need to come up and grow taller to kind of get, you know, I'm not looking for a pure apex, but a little bit more of an apex. So this branch will be in time more of an apex over here. This branch here will come back this way and kind of start filling in over here, but I still need a good, healthy bunch of growth on this side. I think I'm going to get there. 
this nub of the branch that I removed is going to be removed next time I take this when I take this wire off. So I'm not worried about that. That's just there to hold this this wire in place. All right, I think we're done. I think we're going to leave it there and um, hope it didn't kill the tree. I don't think I did. Okay, now we're at the end of September, and uh, this has grown back a little bit. You know, it's 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 filled in. Uh, it hasn't busted out with growth yet because um, I never repotted it when uh, I did the uh, the cutback and everything back in July. Uh, I probably shouldn't have repotted it back then, but I didn't. So we're going to repot it now. Uh, like I said, it's the end of September. Not the best time uh, to repot your tropicals um, with colder weather coming, but. It's probably right at the end for me because remember, I keep these in a greenhouse in the wintertime and, um, you know, I can almost create my own climate. So I'm going to have another couple months uh, to um, make sure that this thing gets gets good growth. So I'm not worried about it at all. So uh, I'm going to repot it and uh, take the old wire off and uh, see what we're dealing with. All right, so I took the wire off. One thing I want to show you, um, one of the reasons I have to repot it now, one, besides the fact that it needs it, is two. This soil is sopping wet, which means it's not draining properly. You can tell that the, the moisture is just kind of laying around here. That will make all the, the roots rot out. But yeah, root rot and just no bueno. These Ficus Davii, they, they grow copious um, amounts of aerial roots. I love that. Um, I'd love to get another aerial root straight down here, maybe one day. In fact, it looks like there's a little nub starting up there actually right now. All right, so now we're just gonna look at the branch work see if there's anything we want to clip back. I'll probably clip back the two leaves on a lot of these. Um, I'm not going to put any wire on it now. We'll wait till we do, till we defoliate it again. And we're just going to let it grow out and let it kind of recover and uh, do its thing. Okay, so not much. Just a little bit of leaves came off. Not a huge change. And obviously this is kind of kind of funky dip here and whatever. It's not totally balanced. Um, and uh, I don't want to kind of de totally defoliate it yet because I want this to recover more. I don't think I recovered properly from when I totally defoliated it before, which is probably because I should have repotted it then. But I, I recall correctly, I didn't just, I, didn't, I don't think I felt like doing it. <laughs> so anyway, it's getting repotted today and it will pop back fine. Uh, but all I did now is you can see right here, I just trimmed the two leaves in most uh, areas. I cut off any branches that were going straight up or straight down. Um, any additional branches, uh, like ones coming out of the same spot, and uh, any, you know, anything on the inside of a curve, stuff like that. We lost a big branch there because uh, the branch had actually died a while ago, um, but I left the nub on there because I was wiring to it. And then I had buds growing up around here, but I didn't want that there anyway, so that's gone. And what we need to do is eventually this needs to kind of get bulkier over this side. So we gotta kind of build this out a little bit so it matches this side, and then um, fill in this dip here so we have a half decent curve over top. But we have time. All right, now to the repot. This soil is sopping wet. Uh, so it was just so compacted. Um, it was just in there too long. So it wasn't doing what it needed to do, and that impacts the the top. So if the, the roots can't grow the way they want to because it's too suffocated with moisture and compacted soil, that um, then uh, you won't get the growth that you want. Sometimes with a nabari that's so kind of got all these different nooks and crannies in it, uh, these weeds will grow right in those nooks and crannies, and they just don't come out when you. Um, do the repot and take out the soil, so you got to go in there with the tweezers and get them all out. Not to say that they won't come back, they will, but um, it's best to get them out when you can. All right, roots are cleaned, mostly trimmed. Forgot to trim this one.
see how I'm holding this uh, scoop here. I'm trying to get soil in between these little nooks and crannies. The tree on the underside has, um, it's kind of open on the underside. I guess I should have shown it on the video, but I didn't. Uh, which means that there's a wide open spot underneath of it. It's not good looking enough to kind of raise the tree up to kind of show more of it. But, so I, I kind of keep it the way it is. But um, what that also does is it causes, creates an air pocket. And I need to fill that the best I can with soil to make sure that I don't have any root rot or stuff like that, which I think might have been some of the problem with the growth issues of this tree. All right, time to water the tree. All right, so that's that. It looks a whole heck of a lot better now that it's repotted. Um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly where the front's going to be. That could be a front, but I think that is going to be the front. And like I said, I wish I had an aerial root coming down here. Although that would make that very symmetrical, which you don't want. But I wish I had something coming down here. Um, we need to build this out a little bit over here. And like I said earlier, build that, fill in that gap that's on top, this little V. And um, we'll be good. But this tree is solid. It should grow back, no problem. And I should see a good flush of growth uh, as well. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.